In this video, I'm going to show a brand new archer who has never fletched arrows before, my wife here, mm -hmm. Heather. And I'm going to show her how to fletch her arrows on her own. And I'm also going to have her feel free to ask questions along the way because she is very new. She's never done this before. She's seen me do it a handful of times. And this way, um, she'll probably have some of the same questions that you may have at home. So it'll be a great learning experience both for her and for you. So in our previous videos to this, we've been working on getting Heather set up with her first arrows. Yes. Yeah. So what did we do so far? So far we have measured my draw length, my draw weight, figured out what spine arrows I needed, purchased arrows, um, let's see, cut them, put in points. What are those knocking points? Is that correct? Those are knocks. Those are knocks. <laughs> so put in the knocks and I think that's all we've done. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> we've done quite a bit and she's learned a lot and now we're going to be fletching arrows. So we have a few different options here just to kind of explain many different jigs that are out there really quickly and briefly. And then we're going to get her set up with, in my opinion, the best jig that's out there on the market, the most easiest to fletch with. And instead of torturing her for years with the jigs that I had to use before this one came out, uh, I'm going to throw her right on to this best, easiest one to use so it goes really well for her. Because the veins that we picked are a little bit difficult to fletch and uh, they are tricky but they are the best veins out there for this type of purpose that we're using them for, at least in my opinion. Well, I decided, <laughs> he decided. that she was going to be using these AAE trad veins. Uh, the reason that we picked this, even though she's not shooting trad archery or a traditional archer, we are string walking. She's going to be shooting indoor states with these and field archery. But these are a great vein that are a little bit on the larger side for indoor use. And because of what I know about these veins and in my experience shooting at an extremely high level, the material that these are used with are made out of the same material that the wave veins are made with. So they're very lightweight and very thin. Uh, which will be very good and very forgiving for a finger shooter, but they're a little bit bigger because we're shooting indoors and she's a beginner. We want a, a bigger vein to grab a bit more air to kind of make those mistakes that she's going to be making go away uh, because that's the whole point of veins. The whole point of veins is to make your arrows fly straight. They grab air, stabilize the arrow, and make it fly straight. Excellent. So it's super simple, super straightforward. You know, we're using a bit more of an advanced technique to fletch these and a bit more of an advanced vein to put on a beginner's shaft, but um, I know that they're really good and I believe in the product and I want her to have the best chance that she can at shooting well. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So we have the veins, we have some glue. This glue is just honestly some fast uh, setting CA glue, super glue. Uh, it's gel, so it's slower drying, which is really important. You can use vein glue and things like that. That does work, and I would recommend normally to use the same company's fletching glue that you are using in the vein. So as you see that on here, you can see it says, uh, don't clean the veins, clean the shaft only with max clean or max wipes, don't use acetone, place the vein in a clamp and put some a fast set gel and then clamp it and repeat the process. Pretty straightforward, but it says, you know, some, some vein manufacturers tell you to use a primer on the veins, some don't, some tell you to use acetone, some tell you to not, and it's really important for proper adhesion because, I mean, you've shot a few arrows and the veins just fly off. Yes. And you've seen them happen on Kai and Genevieve's, our, our kids' arrows as well, they just yes. fly off. And it's kind of frustrating because you can't really shoot that arrow until you fix it again, mm -hmm. right? So. Applying it with the proper technique is very important and using the proper process is very important. So we have veins. Go ahead. I have a stupid question. No, you don't. You have a good question. You just said that I should be using the AAE glue. Why are we using Gorilla Glue? It's <laughs> pretty much the same thing. Uh, and for our process, because I've done this before, it's going to work just fine. So yes, uh, we should be using the AAE Max Bond. I just don't have any. All of my bottles have uh, solidified and become rock solid. But a really good tip for 
people who haven't fletched very much or have, you know, expensive, proprietary, very special, you know, glues like the Max Bonds and things like that. They're formulated to dry in a specific speed and have a specific mm -hmm. consistency so it's the best that it can possibly be for fletching. This is a little thicker. It dries up possibly a little bit slower. It's a little bit messier. It's not ideal. It's so not the best thing. if I was doing thing. this without you, then I should definitely wait and order the glue that goes with the yeah, vein. Yeah, I really should have just ordered the glue with the veins. That's okay. But I forgot. But we still have this, and I did it before on my arrows, and they're fine. They stick. They stick just fine. So, so you're very experienced. Yes. There's a difference. Yeah. So, you know, always, I would recommend definitely using proper vein glue and things like mm -hmm. that, because it really, it just makes the experience a lot more pleasant. It's not as frustrating. It, it, so uh, hopefully I'll help you through this so it's not so frustrating. Thanks. But a quick tip for uh, beginners who have never done this before, store your glue upright like this, obviously, so the, the tip doesn't get clogged and harden, but put it in your fridge. If you store the glue in your refrigerator, it will last for months and months and months, if not years, without curing because the colder temperature really prevents it from uh, you know, really solidifying. And all of my stuff was stored in these cabinets behind me, and I hadn't been shooting for three years. There was a little, <laughs> little laid-off period there, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it all cured inside the bottle, unfortunately. So, store it in your fridge; it'll last a lot longer. Uh, and then we have our Max Clean Max Wipes Arrow Wipes. Uh, it's just basically a good cleaner that cleans up the shaft, removes oils and residues and things like that, so everything sticks really well together. It's pretty okay. easy once we get into it and straightforward. Now, as far as fletching jigs, there's many different options out there on the market. I'll put links in the description below for the veins and the wipes and, you know, some of these jigs that we're using in case you're interested in checking them out. Uh, I do also have a couple videos where I review this jig specifically. So if you want to look and learn more in depth about this jig, I will put a link in the description below plus a card at the top there for you to check out so you can see information about that too. Now, so there's many different jigs out there on the market. There are tower jigs where you literally stick the arrow vertically in a tower like this. Okay. And there are three arms because generally we use three fletchings, three arms. And you put your veins on all three, you put your glue on all three, you swing them all up, you slide down a clamp, and it does three fletchings at a time. I've it's seen pretty neat. Do that. Yeah, I had I had one of the jigs, a boning jig. I actually have all of the proper arms, but I don't have the tower anymore. It's gone. Uh, it works really quick and it's super easy to use. I like it a lot. Um, you know, they have helicals right and left, straight, mm -hmm. all sorts of different things. And we'll talk a little bit more about what helicals are here in a minute. Okay. Um, the, this fletching jig here is just an AEE fletching jig. It's a set offset. You can see how it's slightly off mm -hmm. to one side relative to this bar. Sure. So what that's doing is it's putting a little bit of offset to make the arrow spin as it's going down range. So All is right. there a formula or a rhyme or reason to how much offset you do and why you do it and kind why of, you don't? Kind of, yes and no. So I guess we'll get right into helicals and offsets and stuff to briefly cover that. We'll do another video specifically to fletchings and options for beginners. Mm -hmm. But for this video, we'll brief, briefly cover that. Um, as far as reasons to having offsets or not and having helicals or straight is all personal preference. It also depends on the type of game you're shooting. It also depends on the distance you're shooting. And ultimately to optimize it, meaning make it as best as possible and most forgiving and most accurate for a shooter, there's a lot of playing and testing involved. I see. And it's up to the shooter. But in general, putting fletchings on with a slight offset to give them a... Uh, tendency to rotate one direction or the other is a great idea. It doesn't matter which way you're rotating them in my experience, but what's really important is to give it some sort of direction. Now if we were using feathers, I would say it's absolutely important to fletch a left wing feather with a left helical, okay. or a right wing feather with a right helical. We'll talk about helicals in a second. The reason that's important is just because of the integrity of the actual feather and how it actually cups the wing, the wind, as in flapping, you know. Sure. So if a bird is flapping its wings, it's getting lift by pushing down. But if you turn the wing upside down and push, the air would rush by it. Sure. Because as birds do this, they also go up. Yes, they also tuck in, but they go up and the wind goes by, but it cups it as it goes down. Mm -hmm. So for an, uh, for an arrow, you want it to cup the wind and spin the arrow more. Okay. All right. So there are straight clamps that you can offset at an angle. So if, a, if this is the arrow, you can have a straight vein or a straight clamp, but then you can offset it. And when you offset it, it cups the wind and spins the arrow. Mm -hmm. 
the negative to doing offset or a whole lot of offset with a straight clamp is eventually you'll have, and this would be a magnification, if this is your arrow and this is your fletching and you offset it, it's only touching in the middle. Yeah. So eventually you start losing contact. Sure. So what is the solution to that is something called a helical. So if you look at the difference between this clamp and this clamp, this clamp is straight and this clamp is twisted. You can see how it twists. And the way that it twists is it twists around a shaft. Sure. So as you start increasing your offset a whole lot, you can then wrap the vein around the shaft and that's what helical is called. Mm -hmm. So you have this Bits and Burger fletching jig over here has adjustments that you can offset left or right. It uses a magnetic base, pretty straightforward. But you have straight clamps, left helical clamps, right helical clamps, different knock receivers, different settings, lots of things that you kind of really have to play with to optimize contact and play and, and, and everything. Um, you know, with a helical, you have to, when you're taking an arrow and you put it in the fletching jig, you have to optimize the contact. Right. And so you can see, like this one, it's close, the bottom's a little bit off you got to adjust these dials to get your contact perfect, otherwise the veins aren't going to be touching. And by perfect, do you mean the shaft needs to be actually touching the rod, or is it close? Like, how will you know if it's perfect? So perfect would be if I had a fletching, if this was my fletching, mm -hmm. and if uh, this was my arrow shaft, my okay. arm, what I would want to do is every single place where this helical wraps around the shaft, you would want the vein to be contacting the shaft at 90 degrees in the center of the shaft. Okay. If it's slightly offset like this, then obviously you have contact yes. issues, mm -hmm. adhe adhesion issues, and then you're relying on the uh, integrity of the glue to hold the vein on. Whereas if it's touching directly, you're physically bonding the vein to the arrow itself so it yes. will stay on. That Does that make sense? sense? So it's very critical when you're using helicals to make sure it's aligned properly. That's where some of the tower jigs are very nice because the helical is pre-done to be in the exact center of the shaft. It's really, really nice. Um, these, the Bitsenberger, or some of the other ones that are just like the Bitsenberger that are out there and are basically knockoffs now of the same old school technology, all have to have really finite adjustments to be right. And it gets frustrating. It takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. lots of trial and error. And even when you get these contacting correctly, there are a little bit of issues, like the center of this is actually higher up than the ends are. So the ends will touch before the center touches. It's just frustrating. It's an old design. These are old castings that have been used for, I don't know how many decades, but for forever, <laughs> basically. Sure. Um, so, you know, I bought my fletching jig from my shop when it closed up north, and this jig is probably 50 plus years old, Wow. would be my guess. So it's very sensitive for these type of settings and it's a little complicated. A simple jig like this works great. A tower jig works great. These work great but require some setup. But the jig that I really like using um, that has just not recently come out but has you know, been circulating the market for the last five to 10 years, probably less than that, probably five years or so. This is the Last Chance Archery Vein Master Pro. Uh, and it basically cures all the problems that you have with the Bitsenberger over there. It automatically centers your arrow. You can adjust the helical. You can do straight. You can do helical right, helical left. You can do helical in one degrees all the way to five degrees. Or if you modify it like I do, you can get up to eight degrees of helical. So degrees is how many degrees of offset is that clamp relative to the center line of the arrow. The more angle you have, the more spin you have. Right? Makes sense. It does. Okay. So you said in another video you're going to explain a how bit to more. decide yeah. how much like helical. We yeah, need. I mean, we'll, we'll, we can briefly overview that. Um, in general, the shorter distance you're shooting, the more spin you want. Because you want to have a lot of drag on that arrow to, to stabilize it and straighten it because you're shooting a very short distance. Right. Like, you're going to be shooting indoor states, as, as I will. <laughs> that's comical, I know. <laughs> Not about you, that's comical about me. <laughs> comical. <laughs> Come go for both the of us. six-week archer. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> more drag is better for that. But if we're shooting 50 meters, uh -huh. you don't want a whole lot of drag because the arrow starts falling out of the sky. Right. It starts parachuting. It starts doing sure. things that are negative to the actual flight of the arrow. So there is a balance there. Okay. And to give you an idea of about how advanced it is, when I shot a 90-meter feet around, that means when I shot 90 meters, which is 99 mm -hmm. yards, 
the best uh, grouping arrows at 90 meters, I shot with a one degree helical. Okay. The best that I could shoot at 70 meters, I actually could run as much helical as I wanted. I ran eight degrees of helical at 70 meters and it shot wow. best. So Was once, that because of the draw weight that you had? No, it's because of the, how long and far out that arrow has to go. And the further it has to go, and you have a lot of helical, the more it slows down. And as it starts slowing down, it starts losing its like this balance between speed of the arrow and speed of the rotation from the, the spin. Mm -hmm. And so as the amount of speed of the arrow forward slows down to the point of where the spin takes over, the arrow starts corkscrewing, and you don't really actually get a very good uh, impact on the target because the arrow's just chaotically tumbling out of the air, essentially. So it's not ideal. But indoors, close distance, bigger veins, the better, the more spin, the better. That's why we got these three inch veins mm -hmm. that have a decently high profile for you and we're not shooting a small vein because we're not worried about wind drift, we're not worried about anything like that. So we're just gonna put an average amount of helical on your arrows. What's an average amount? I'm gonna say about two degrees. Two okay. to three degrees would be average uh, for most people out there. And because we are going to play indoors, we're gonna play outdoors, we're gonna just shoot arrows all over the place. <laughs> We might Probably. as well set up for that medium happy setup. Okay. You know, because if we were optimizing your arrows for indoors, we'd be shooting fat arrows. We'd be shooting giant feathers. We'd be doing all these things. We're right. just wanting to get you close and get you on the right path that is a better setup than what you can buy out of the box, basically. Sounds good. Cool. All right, so uh, straightforward. You gotta start with your max, the Max Clean Arrow Wipes. Um, and basically you just, Pull one out of the package, and then you wipe down the arrow shaft where you're gonna stick the vein in the back. And something I like to do, after I'm done wiping down the arrows, I will hang on to the arrow wipe and then use that to clean my jig off in between fletchings to wipe off the excess glue, just so everything stays a little bit cleaner and I don't have to waste a paper towel. We've already got this thing out of the package anyway, uh, so it'll How be able to wipe down. That's like, fine, plenty. Like, yeah. It's not science, you know, it's just, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Is that dry or is that? No, it has a little moisture. Okay. I mean, it's these not are, soaking These wet. are, yeah, they're not soaking wet. These are years old, uh, but they still work great. I mean, technically you're supposed to, uh, no, you just vigorously wipe the end of the arrows. Was that vigorous? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> One wipe per dozen arrows. So we've got a dozen arrows here. No, you're fine. Maybe that wasn't as It's vigorous. really not that difficult. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You might as well do those too. Actually, we're only gonna fletch a couple today, so those will you'll wipe as you before you do more yeah. later in the house or something. So another th another quick tip that I find important, especially if you're using gel super glue like we've got here, don't store it in between fletching each uh, fletching upright because the glue goes down and you have to wait for it to go back into the tip. So I always store it after I get it to the tip on the side like that. It that really is. just helps keep the glue towards the tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way that we're gonna set up this jig, because it's advanced, we have to adjust it. So if you look here on this, I'll take this out of the way. You can see that there are different pegs there mm -hmm. and there, okay? So I'll show the camera here. So the different pegs on the actual fletching jig here and over here are for right and left helical. And each peg is a different amount. So it goes from, it's, uh, I believe it's zero degrees in the center. So the, the most inner peg is zero degrees and then it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five degrees. Okay. On the right side, it's actually left helical, and on the left side, it's right helical. Okay. It's just the way it is and the way that this happens to spin, it's opposite of what you would think. And you had said that it doesn't matter? In, a begin in the beginning stages of archery, it doesn't really matter. In the advanced stages, I argue that it matters, although uh, the only way that you can prove it is shooting six arrows fletch one direction and six arrows fletch the other direction and shoot them all at the same target and plot your arrows over a length of time and see which arrows grouped better. Have you done that? Yes, I have. Many times. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> so for me, I found left helical shot better. Okay. Um, and for you, we can set it up right or left helical. It doesn't matter. What do you want to do? Well, you are much better than I am, so let's go with left. Okay. So we'll do, take, you can take this little peg Left is going to be on this right side, so you want to stick... You want it two um, or three. You said two or probably, three. Probably, 
two degrees should be more than enough. So you want to go in the third peg yep. over. Yep. So then you take this and you bump it down against the stop. Okay. And then tighten the knob in the back while holding that down. How tight? Just snug so you know it won't move. That's fine. Tight's tight. It's great. Pull the peg out because that peg always falls out. And we'll store it behind us. Can't tell you how many times I've lost that. And so now we're permanently set with three degrees, two degrees of left helical on this clamp. Excellent. Okay. So next you want to take an arrow and I will do the first one. This has a rotating V-block assembly. And so all that it does is it keeps the arrow perfectly vertically centered, level and square to the knock receiver here. Great. All right. So before we go any further, I want to talk about aligning knocks. Now this jig, we can uh, index the knocks to fletch the, uh, the odd fletching, the cock fletching in the right place. But we have arrows with adjustable knocks. We can twist the knocks. Mm -hmm. So honestly, it's a waste of time to do it because I've spent so much time trying to figure this out and I never get it right anyway. I just turn the knocks after I fletch the arrows. But okay. it's really important if you're using the other arrows that we've got that we had for you, the double X75s with the glue on knocks, yes. they're glued on, they're permanent. You have to align your fletchings for your setup here. Okay. Recurve, general rule of thumb is the oddball fletching pointing away from your plunger or straight out from your shelf. And compound is either pointing up or pointing down. It's the same thing, you just rotate it 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. For us, we don't really care, but we're going to do, what do you want to do? Two orange and one white or one orange, two white? Two orange and one white. Okay. So we'll do that, and all you gotta do is just make sure you're putting two orange and one white on. There's no orientation, no, you know, if we were doing three different colors, you'd want them on three in the same way and rotate them the same, and you know, just so it's consistent, so they look the same and look uniform. And if you're shooting a high level competition, um, it actually is required that all arrows look identical. Uh, another thing about this jig, it's got a little bungee cord here that holds the arrow in against the knock receiver. So, so when you're spinning the knock receiver, the arrow's not working its way out. It does that on some of the other jigs, so you have to pay attention to making sure the knock is fully seated in the receiver, especially on the bits and burgers. So now what we'll do, and I'll have you set up the first one, and I'll just talk you through it. It's really not too bad. Are you sure? Yes. We're not gluing it yet. Okay. So Sounds it's not good. go time. So you're gonna slide it onto the pegs like that. Okay. And so go ahead and you can feel how it is because it's not difficult, but you might as well do it and slides on and now look at these little half moon things. Uh -huh. You want to align those half moon things to contact the arrows. You just move them? Yes, so you, you just twist it? them. So what you want to do is align it so you'll have to pick it up and look at the jig and you want to make sure the half moons are in the exact center or the shaft is in the center of those half moons. It's pretty straightforward and relatively simple at least on this jig. So what we're doing or what she's doing is she chose to do two degrees of left helical. So the clamp is set at two degrees of offset and now we're adjusting the helical or the twisting of the veins to have perfect contact on the shaft. Cool. So that was easy and straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Not too bad? Super easy. Yeah. So now you can pop open these fletchings and they're pretty simple. They're really soft, really thin. They're actually, yeah, they're actually designed to be shot off a shelf and a trad bow. So they're just really, really soft and thin. And because they're thin, they're also very lightweight. And due to what I know about what's really critical with shooting fingers on uh, any sort of setup is the lighter the vein, the better, the more forgiving. Okay. All right, so like that's that. why I picked this super light, super thin, um, and really nice vein that they've got. Mm -hmm. All right. So now what you're going to look for is you'll see on this wire here, there's a little black mark. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see because I actually scraped it off on accident and then that's actually just resharpened back on. But the, the, the vein just simply goes in between the wires like that. And so you and put the, the back of the vein in that same place like that every single time. So it locates the vein forward to back. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So after you get it in there like this, it's in the right spot, it's just touching it. Now we take our glue. So there are many different methods on how to apply some of these glues. Mm -hmm. um, I like to be very liberal, liberal with the glue just because if it's not, if there's not glue in, on the vein, that part of the vein is not going to stick to the shaft. Just can't. Uh, there are some other techniques that people will take on smaller veins. They will do five dots 
one on each end, one in the center, and then split the difference between the two. Just teeny little dots, and then you can take like a, a, a toothpick and spread the glue on the vein. So you're okay. using very minimal glue, you'll have minimal excess, and it's, it's not very messy and it's very clean. It works great for compound style veins, standard style veins, but these, these type of veins, like I said earlier in the video, they are the hardest veins to fletch. And the reason that they are is because the base is so thin. Okay. So they're tricky to fletch. It's not bad. I will show you th this jig, they're not bad. That jig is a nightmare. It's rough. Um, okay. So it's really not that bad on this jig. So like I said, I just put a solid bead all the way down the fletching right in the center of the actual So what happens to all fletching. the excess glue when it squishes out? That's where we've saved this and okay. we're going to wipe everything down. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's not too bad. I'll do one here like this and then um, actually when you're doing it, I'll probably do a close up okay. of the actual process. I mean, honestly, I'm just trying to get it on the vein. And it's tricky because this stuff is so thick. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling to get it on there because yeah. it's just not wanting to come out consistently and it looks really ugly. So you may not have the prettiest fletched arrows in the world. As long as they stick taking the bottle and laying it down like that. Yeah, as long as they stick, they will. And so what I'm gonna do now is just slide it against the arrow. I'm gonna make sure I didn't bump it off of my mark, which I did. And technically, that's it. That's all you need to do, just slide it against the shaft. Yeah. But what I like to do, because I really like to help these stick, and I've just learned, you don't have to do it, but I, I, I like doing it because it's just an extra set of uh, motions. I hold it against the arrow, not too hard because you can pop it off of the knock receiver, especially if it was rotated. And I just take the vein and I hold it and kind of squish it against the shaft just to make sure it's got a little bit of extra contact through the center section. You don't have to do this step, but I found that the arrows or the fletchings just stick a little bit better and get a little bit more consistent contact. And you don't really have to wait very long. If you, especially if you have the right fletching glue, 15 seconds to 30 seconds per vein. It really yeah. doesn't take long yeah. at all. There there was some old glue out there. I forget what it was called. I actually honestly think it was called fast set glue. It was like 15 minutes per vein. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So <laughs> back before, you know, we had CA glues um, and super glues, we shops had those style jigs on a turntable and they would do a dozen arrows at a time. They'd have a dozen jigs. And by the time they got to the 12th, fletching they would go to the next fletching on the next arrow that's how long it took the glue to dry but for these you don't have to let it dry all that long just give it an extra little bit of help because i wanted to and then all you do well it's still going to be wet but so she just said that it's still wet it's still wet where the glue is thick but where it's really thin underneath the vein and because we clean the shaft properly and because these arrows are carbon and because this is rubber it's already bonded and it's done so i just pull it off and it's already on there. Magic. <laughs> Ta-da. So Ta -da. you can see it doesn't want to come off. Oh, I have a question. You spun it. How do I know how much to spin it? Just these fancy little clicks. Are they clicks? Yeah. Go ahead and spin it. Ooh. So those That's clicks, fancy. yeah, they're indexed perfectly <laughs> on this jig 120 degrees apart because we're fletching three fletchings. Yes. Three spacing 120 degrees is 360 degrees. Right. So now there's a little bit of excess glue on here, and that's where this comes in handy. I just wipe it off. And eventually it'll build up, but this jig has, um, this jig has these like, these are like little Teflon sleeves basically. So as the glue dries, I just flake it off. It's easy. So it's the same process. You just throw it in, find the line, good. Add your glue. Yep. And it comes out a little chunky again because it's gel. So I just go back and spread it down, kind of make it look somewhat okay. <laughs> push the thing against the clamp. And as you can see, if I pushed it too hard, it see how that would want to come off? Yeah. So you got to be careful with how much you push on it. And then just give it a little extra force to kind of get it to stick. And as you can see, and again, I'll do close-ups here when she's actually doing it. As I'm going like this, you can see the glue kind of gooing out right mm -hmm. but give it a little help I don't know how long has it been maybe 20 seconds maybe and 
You can see it wants to stick. Cool. Now, if I was extra aggressive with it, I could peel it off. Sure. But it's stuck enough to be bonded to the shaft. It's not fully cured, but it is stuck enough to where it can dry sitting against the wall behind us as we're fletching more. And how long does it need to dry before it's fully cured? I mean, it'll probably be fully cured in um, uh, 60 to 120 seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really not that long. So we already did the two orange. We'll mm -hmm. give you your one white. And so from time to time, it's good to just check and visually make sure that the peg is in the right peg. It, the, well, the peg's not there, but it's still aligned to that peg and make sure these half moons are adjusted. Sometimes if I really bump it on accident, I'll go back and recenter everything just to make sure it's good to go. But as long as you're gentle with it and you're not banging things around, dropping it, or you know, letting it sit for three days in between your fletchings, <laughs> uh, it should be just fine. So now that it's done and we've cleaned this off, it's, you take your arrow off and you can check it out. And you can see how it's got a little bit of spin to just it. Just a little. Just enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's all we really wanted. Okay. So then when you're done fletching it, all I do is I just set it against the wall like that. And then you let it cure and that's it. One more thing that I forgot to do that does help, not required, but it's a little bit of extra security. You can put an extra dab of glue on the ends, the front and back of each vein. Just an extra little bit to hold down that little bit, extra piece of the vein, just in case. It just helps. Because sometimes the front edge will lift or the back edge will lift, and this will really just kind of secure it down that little bit more. And that's where having, especially during this step, having a the correct glue is important because it's so thick it doesn't want to get down in there and actually get it on it. So it's a little clunky, mm -hmm. but when it cures and dries, it shrinks a lot. Yep, and always make sure you have the fat part towards the back. You're right, it's very thick glue. Yeah. I might have put too much. Yeah. Like I said, better to have a little bit too much than not enough, in my opinion. So it's in, and then... Yep, and then I just give it that little bit of extra. Squish. Yeah. And then the front, you might want to hook your finger on it and push it down just the front edge, like, like that. Again, I don't know if it actually matters or not, but I... It just makes me feel a little bit better and uh, a little bit more secure in the actual vein gluing process. So what you really want to do and what you really want to focus on is reducing the space between the vein and the shaft itself. Because if there's any space between it, you're using and relying on the glue to actually adhere the vein to the shaft. Instead of the glue essentially melting the shaft and the vein slightly, sort of, and adhering them to each other and creating an actual bond because super glue is not a gap filler when it glue when it dries out all the solvents evaporate and all that's left is a teeny little bit of residue and it shrinks so much so if you have a big space between the vein and the shaft then there is nothing really holding it together and that glue will just fracture right off you want to get the entire base of the fletching to touch the entire shaft itself so that way you have an actual physical bond between the two pieces and it makes things a whole lot more secure and it'll be stuck for longer than the vein will last, at least normally. Really easy. It's not too difficult, right? It's a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah. 90% of that is the chicken. <laughs> well? If I had to say, okay, there's that Bits and Burger, let's get it aligned and now you gotta pull part of the front of the fletching away. I say, and... I'm glad you're my husband, please do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little, it just makes it complicated. This honestly simplifies it so much. Oh, this is great. Especially because of these veins. It just makes a, a massive difference. Yeah. I'm all super glue. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> it's exfoliating. When you take it off, it leaves, Oops. you know, pulls some of your skin off. There's like a happy medium between letting it fully cure and pulling it off quickly so it's still liquefied where it was thick but stuck enough on the vein. Mm -hmm. um, it gets tricky with the Bits and Burger because you have to open the clamp and pull it off, whereas this it just slides off. It is um, nice. Yeah, but sometimes I've had it where the glue makes it, it actually is stuck shut. And so you gotta pop it apart and then rip it off and you end up ripping the vein off. Um, it, it can get frustrating. 
but uh, this makes it a little bit easier for sure yeah. and a lot less messy. So now, yeah, you go ahead and just take it off, and then you give your extra little little drop of glue on the ends, and it's just kind of for just security. Um, some people do it, some people don't. I definitely do it. I've had the front edge of a vein lift on me, and I think if I would have had a drop of glue on it, it wouldn't have done that. Are there any cons to doing it? No. It's a little messier, looks a little less perfect, but in all honesty, you have to get up really close to somebody's arrow to see if they did a decent job or not. Well, what, what, Nobody get very close to my arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are hideous too, so don't even worry about it. It's one of those things you either love or hate in the sport, it's I believe. It's very satisfying. It's, it is satisfying, especially when you're done and you have the full dozen arrows. They look really pretty and they're done, you know, and you've done it yourself. Well, I've done it. Yeah. And that way I know that if for some reason I need to do it, I can. Yeah. And, and if one falls off, we can cut it off and replace it. That's great. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah, I mean, we bought... Uh, 50 packs of each of these veins so we have more than enough fletchings to do plenty of arrows a really nice thing to do if you're building your own equipment because putting stuff on yourself setting up your bow yourself cutting your arrows yourself gluing in the points yourself it's all quite satisfying and uh, Heather seems to be more and more excited huh. about it which and it's a good thing. how things work. Yeah. You know, because it gives you a sense of, or it gives me a sense of ownership and, and more involvement, not just going out and flinging some arrows. Like, it, it makes it an experience, a whole process. Yeah. If I built these arrows for you and handed them to you, as opposed to you doing it yourself, I mean, there's a big difference there, right? Well, it would be not nearly as much fun. Yeah. Well, that, and that, and like you said, the ownership part. Right. Yeah. Yeah, these are definitely mine. And if for some reason veins pop off or something goes wrong, I can't blame you. I can only take ownership for that. So I, I think that's Is that a, a positive or a I think it's a good marital thing. Sure. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, it's good for people, even at a beginning stage, to learn how to do this type of stuff. Because if they have failures in the field uh, or at a tournament or something like that, they can fix it themselves if they need to or have the ability to. Um, and they at least appreciate it a whole lot more. And I believe that that is really important and it's something I learned early on in shooting archery was building my own stuff. That was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of when I was 14 to 15 years old is when I really started doing things on my own and learning how to do this stuff myself. And it definitely brought my archery game up. I paid more attention to the fletchings. I looked at them for more damage. Uh, you know, I tried to replace them and clean them and just keep them as nice as possible because I owned it, like she was saying. It's it's taking ownership it gives you of what more you're confidence. doing. Yes. If you're thinking about your mental game, at least with my sport, um, knowing that I've done everything I can do to prepare myself, it would give me more confidence. Yeah. Um, which I think would make you know my mindset a lot better. I believe so. No real questions then. No, that's it. This is right. really easy. Yeah. I didn't think it would be. No. But amazing. this was great. Yeah, it's intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, so originally Jake was like, oh, we're going to fletch some arrows. I'll quick show you, and then we'll just like put on a movie, and you can fletch your arrows. And I was like, I think you're nuts. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. It has to be hard. It wasn't hard. No. It's one of those things that you can do sitting on the couch in front of the TV, enjoying a beverage of your choice, and just really relaxing. Because it's not, it's not something that really requires an intense amount of focus. You do have to st still pay attention. Yeah, thanks. This is great. Yeah, so... Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because we are still finishing out this series. Uh, we're going to continue to build this out. We're going to go outside eventually when the weather calms down because it's a little windy. And we are going to do some bear shaft tuning with her and get her set up. We'll probably have to trim arrows or break off points or do different things. And you can follow along in the process and hopefully have some questions of yours answered within that process because she's asking really great questions and hopefully you're learning a lot along the way at home too uh we do appreciate everybody who's been watching and requesting this more beginner content we'll continue doing this and especially if there's a lot more requests for more beginner content and especially if it's specific so please comment below and let us know if you'd like to see anything else more specific or more in detail if you have more questions about veins and feathers and ways to fletch them and whatever please comment and ask those questions because we'll answer them in the next video that we do in regards to i'll answer them and the next video in regards to fletching because we'll probably do standalone videos of 
here's all the different veins and we'll have a beginner asking questions of me of, okay, what is and why and how do you use them? Where would you use them? String materials, stabilizers, you name it. Um, we'll probably do some more of that stuff in the future. It's really valuable to have somebody who's new around asking those questions because I've, again, forgotten more than... Than I'll ever know. Yeah, well, I doubt that, but... It's true. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to, and above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.